Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 11 of the YQuest series, and I'm totally out of control in this game. It's not good. Um, we're going to be looking at YQuest, surprisingly, um, on the Spectrum Next, would you believe? So here's the Spectrum Next version of the game, and I'm playing quite terribly. Anyway, so, yeah, playing terribly. So we're going to be looking at this today. This is a port of all of the other versions. The graphics are basically the same as the Sam Coupe. It's actually in 256 color mode, but the game was designed for 16 colors, so there's not really any benefit there. But we're going to be having a look at it anyway. And the code that we're looking at today is based on my simple series I recently did. I recently did a Spectrum Next simple series on drawing bitmaps and using the keyboard to read in the controls for the game. So we're going to be using that code and we're going to be building YQuest on it. Let's go over to the code, let's check it out. Okay, so here is the code, as I say, based on the, the simple series. If you've not seen that, you might want to go and take a look. I'm going to go over it briefly here anyway. And of course, the code as well is also based on the multi-platform series. There's been five episodes of YQuest covering the common code, which we're not going to cover today. But if you're only interested in the Spectrum Next bits, then this should cover all of that for you. Now first here, we're defining the screen size. This is for the multi-platform code because different systems have different screen sizes. So that's just allowing the multi-platform code to work okay. I'm then defining some macros for the Spectrum Next register commands. Now these are some special Z80 commands that have been added to the Spectrum Next CPU. They aren't recognized by VASM, so I've created a macro to do this for me. We're defining the user RAM at 7000. This is the RAM that the game uses for the variables and things. We then got some definitions for my multi-platform assembly. And next we've got the start of the code at 8000. We're using a clear screen routine here. We're then defining the layer two, turning it to palette one here. And we're starting to initialize the palette here. We're transferring the palette using the next register 41 here, selecting the palette number with 40 here. And of course we're selecting the layer two palette with hex register 43 here. Once we've done that, we're initializing the layer two, setting up the starting position of the screen, and then we're turning it on here. Now, here we've got our show title routine. The first thing we're doing is resetting the game level. So we're setting the lives to three, zeroing the level and silencing the sound. Then finally clearing the screen and showing the image of the, of the game logo. Now this is stored one byte per tile, each tile is eight by eight. So what we're doing here is we're loading in a byte of the tile definition and then calculating the sprite address by the tile number and then showing the sprite to the screen. So we need to multiply the X and Y position by eight and eight because each tile is eight lines tall and eight bytes wide. And then we use our show sprite routine there. Next, we're showing some important bits of information to the screen, the fire message, the URL of my website, and also the high score. And then we're waiting for fire and we're clearing the screen and we're defining the level contents, the enemies and things. Now this happens at the start of the game, but the start of every new level as well. Then we've got some code that you might recognize from the simple series if you've seen that. We're reading in from the joystick. We've got a little delay here to wait for a read from the joystick. If you want to make the game fast, you would reduce this. If you want to make it slow, you would increase it. We're then drawing the user UI, the basically the score and the remaining lives and things, clearing the player sprite from the screen, and then we're going to start processing the keys. But first, we're checking the timeout. Now, if you hold down a key like right, the acceleration will start to increase, but we don't want to start speeding up too fast. So there's a timeout where repeated holding of the key will be ignored. And that's what that's doing there. Then we are checking the player directions. The player directions have been read in by this read joystick, although it's actually keyboard. It's actually reading in the keys. It's just a common name there. And then we're processing each direction and we're changing the Y and X acceleration accordingly. And we're also setting E to two here. E is the new timeout and that's only set if up, down, left or right are pressed. You can see it's being stored there. Now, if fire one is being pressed, then we are firing a bullet using the common fire bullet code, which is in the multi-platform code. If fire two is pressed, we're stopping the player movement. Our fire one is space and fire two is enter in this example. Now, finally here, we've got draw and move. This is multi-platform code, which handles all of the logic of the game. That's in the first five episodes. So please take a look at that if you want to see that code. Finally, we've got the infinite loop here, which jumps all the way back up here for the repeating of the main game loop. Now here, we've got a print character routine. This uses our sprite font to draw a character to the screen. The sprites and the font are the same format in this case. So what we're doing here is we are subtracting 32 because our font has nothing below a space. Space is 32. We are then multiplying the sprite number by 64 because there's 64 bytes per character. 
and then we're adding that to the font data which is an address within our code here which will have the font we're then taking the cursor x and y position cursor x is immediately after cursor y so we're loading them both in together here and we're multiplying y by eight because eight lines x by eight because eight bytes eight pixels wide and that's the new location we want to draw and we're all jumping down here for our draw routine do sprite object is basically reading in the sprite number from ix and also the x and y position so this is used for drawing objects from like the player or basically everything really the player the bullets and also the enemies so let's say it's loading the sprite number x and y from ix here our show sprite routine is here we're using get screen pause to calculate the memory address and also page in the layer to bank into the low memory address areas, the, usually the ROM area, so that when we write, we're writing to the screen and then we're drawing the sprite to the screen. So at this point, the sprite address has been calculated and also the screen has also been banked in. Blank sprite is just using character zero of the font, which is the space to just clear a sprite from the screen. Get sprite address here is calculating an address within the sprite. Now the sprite data is just down here. There's four banks of it. And because each sprite is eight by eight, there's actually a mistake here. This should be 1024 bytes, uh, very big. So because each sprite is eight by eight, it's 64 bytes. So, and there's 16 sprites per bank. So we're calculating the sprite frame times four here and loading that into H and that will select which of the bank of 16 sprites we're doing because there's four frames of animation. You can see those just here. Here's the bitmap data. First, we've got our font, then we've got our sprite data here. And these are all the data that the game uses for graphics. Get next line, we'll move down the line. This is within the simple series. This will calculate moving down the line and page in a new bank of layer two memory if required. Get screen pause is similar. It calculates the offset within the first zero to three triple F range and also pages in the correct bank of layer two video memory into that area for writing, only for writing, not for reading. And so that will work there. Wait for fire, wait for fire B. These use the read joystick routine, which should be called read keyboard in honesty, but it uses the same name for all of the systems. We're just checking one of the bits here and we're randomizing until the space button has been released and pressed basically. And so that, that's just for when the game's over or when the next level is about to start. Now read joystick here is actually reading from keyboard and this is using the spectrum keyboard in the same way as you've probably seen before. So we set C to FE and B, we set one of the bits to zero and that will select one of the lines of the keyboard. And we're just repeatedly rotating, rotating right B here, reading in, shifting a few of the bits into H here. And what we're using is QA, OP, space and enter. Enter is the second fire, space is the first. So a bit, a bit complex there, but that's what we're doing. It's been covered in the simple series again. Clear screen. This is going to clear the screen because the Spectrum Next is using 48 kilobytes for its screen, but we can only have 16 kilobytes accessible within that low bank at any time. So we're having to do this in three parts here. So we're paging in each part using the get screen pause, and then we're doing a clear screen of part of the screen here, and that will do the job for us here. So that's what we're doing. And then finally here, we've got the palette, and this is in the one byte per color entry format here. There is a two byte entry version, but I'm not using that. And then finally, we've got some includes here for the common code that does all of the work for the bits you've not seen here. Well, there we go. That's all there is to it, if you will. Now, as I say, if you want to see more on the graphics routines please see this simple series. I did a joystick example and a simple sprite example in which I went over that keyboard reading and also those drawing routines in a bit more detail. So please have a look at those if that's what you want to see. Um, as I always say, the code you can download today, it's on my website. You can download the source code for the Spectrum Next version and also the common code. And you're totally welcome to do whatever you want with it. You, you can change the name and then sell it. I don't care. Uh, you don't need to give me credit either. I don't mind about that. So anyway, whatever you, if you can make something out of this, then please go ahead. I, the idea of this game was that people could have some fun with it and maybe learn from it. So if you manage that, then I really wish you all the best. Anyway, if you've liked this episode, please like and subscribe because YouTube ranks videos by how many people like them. So if you like the video, then other people might find it. That's all we can hope for. Anyway, whatever you do, though, I hope you have a lot of fun. I wish you all the best in whatever creative projects you're doing. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.